Well, I haven't done a video in a couple months and yet ice fishing season is still nowhere near over. This is the beginning of the best ice fishing of the season here in Manitoba. Middle of March to the middle of April is when you've got the safest ice, the easiest travel, the best weather. So we're just gonna get going here in a lot of ways. What I'm gonna do today is give you a crash course introduction to Panoptics. Very little is known about it being that it's new technology, being that it's not cheap, and being that there's very little media on it. But the media that is out there shows some pretty dynamic views. And I think a lot of people know this is likely a massive game changer. And really, game changers are so rare in fishing. I think the term is way overused. We've got new products every year and new improvements every year. Stuff like, you know, an ice fishing scoop like this. It's called a one shot skimmer from deep freeze fishing. You plunge it down below the slush and then it kind of rotates and you can lift all the slush out at once, which is a neat product, but it's certainly not a game changer. It just makes it a little bit easier to scoop out a hole. Ice shacks have gotten so much easier to set up. They're thermal now, which just makes it such a great experience when you're fishing for climate control and everything. Battery powered augers is just a great technology that has been refined year after year after year Lots changes over a decade, very little changes from one season to the next. And then you come to ice fishing electronics, which have been commonplace in ice fishing for two or three decades now. And every year there are slight refinements made, new zoom features or tightening up your target separation, making that better and better and better. Of course, in recent years, moving to some LCD models that now incorporate mapping with GPS function, which isn't really a game changer because I can do all that on my phone. It doesn't change the actual fish finder itself. And that's where you enter in panoptics. The reason that panoptics is shaping up to be such a game changer is that since the beginning of fish finder technology, Everything has been based around a 19 degree cone angle. So what that means is that when you're in 10 feet of water, you've got a three foot diameter footprint that you can see on the bottom below your hole. And then that beam does expand. So if you're in 20 foot of water, then you're gonna have about six foot of information. So if you picture your jig in the middle of that beam, you're really only seeing what's three feet away from your jig in any direction when you're in 20 feet of water. So. This is Panoptics Ice Bundle. And what we can do with this now is break out of that narrow 19 degree beam angle of looking just at what is directly below your hole and widen that search. So you can see all around you and if you choose, you can even scan to like 50, 60, 80, 100 feet in any direction to see what's around you for fish in the water column, to see what's around you for rock and weed structure in the distance. So I'm gonna set this up quick. There's the head unit. There's the instructions, which we won't need. Just normal stuff here. Actually, you may need the instructions unless you've seen a video before of this in action. You'll know how it goes together or if you played with Lego as a child. And these shaft pieces, you don't have to include them all. If I was at first ice, I would only include one of them. And then probably middle of winter, you'd only need two of them. And right now, I think three of them. Unless I went to Lake Winnipeg and there was 45 inches of ice, I might need all of them. And this is just to get my transducer down below the ice so I can actually scan around to the side. Look at this thing. One nice thing is that the rest of this unit comes ready to go. You just have to snap the head unit in, which goes in just that easily which shows you that if you had another one of these brackets on your boat, you could just snap this in and out very easily, or you could put it on your snowmobile. It's not cheap, so when you invest in a unit like this, you wanna get year-round use out of it. This would be your standard, whatever it is, like 19 degree transducer, although I think you can adjust the angle of this from anywhere from eight to 24 degree. And then in addition to that standard transducer, we have this fancy transducer and this is where the panoptics lives inside of this transducer and this just goes on with a quick little wing nut type thing here just gonna take this out here this is the battery 
And this is the size of battery that comes with every other ice fishing electronics, basically. So you can see it is much bigger. This unit, you can run on full brightness for I think probably 11 or 12 hours. Definitely will get you through a full day of fishing. What you could consider doing, a lithium option. These aren't cheap, but they are so light and have so much power in them. You can see physically it is the exact same size as the standard 12 volt lead acid flasher battery, but it is half the weight, I would say, and has maybe twice the power. I don't know exactly how it stacks up. Okay, let's drill a hole and get this going. Power this up. We do have uh, GPS on here, so you can do mapping and waypoints and whatever else. And then if you want, you've got traditional sonar that you can play with, with this other transducer. So I can drop that in the hole. If you do prefer the 2D, or you've got a reason that you want to use that instead of panoptics, you do have this other transducer. So you've got flasher settings and split zoom settings and all that. But like I said, we are all about the panoptics. So there's two different panoptics views to choose from. They have very different applications. What I'm going to start with is live view forward. So I'm scanning out at an angle like this. Now comes the cool stuff. Down it goes. So if you haven't seen panoptics before, just looking at this screen is gonna be completely foreign to you. The first thing I'll say about it is that the entire screen is updating with live data, which is unlike any other sonar technology because if you think about 2D sonar, it is only refreshing on the right side of the screen and then it is all scrolling historical data to the left. If you were to go to something like uh, side scanning technology or whether you want to call it side imaging or side view for summer fishing, you've got the top of the screen updating with live fresh data and then it scrolls downward and the rest of the screen is showing historical data. If you think about 360 imaging or spotlight scan, again, there's just one spot on the screen that is refreshing with live data and the rest is historical data. So now looking at this screen, everything here is refreshing with live data. So there's two scales, one going across the top here, and this is distance away from the transducer and it's pointed straight across the pond like that. And then on the vertical axis here is the depth of water. Going further away when you're like 15, 20 feet away, it's down to 16, 17 feet of water. And then in the distance, it starts to come up shallower on the other side of the pond. And if I want to see more information, I can just open up the scale further yet here. And when we go up to say 70 feet away from us, return there, that color is the weed line that it's hitting going across the other side of the pond. And then of course, it'll eventually come up to zero feet on the far side of the pond. Okay, so what am I gonna do here? I'm just gonna give you a little bit more perspective on what you're seeing in the distance here by drilling some holes. And you'll see on the top of the screen here, as I get progressively further away, you'll see my auger flight plunge in to the reading in several places. How cool is that? So I left the auger probably just off the weed line, right there. That solid line is my auger flight just off the weed line. If I were to go a little bit further, I'd be drilling into weeds over there, which I can show you too. <clears throat> okay, so obviously I can see an auger flight no problem. I'm gonna put on a Jackal TN60 rattle bait and I'm gonna drop this down like whatever. What is that, 10 feet away? I'll tell you in a second. There it is right there. So it's 10 feet away. And here I am jigging it. I could turn the sensitivity down, but I, I wanna make sure that we can see that good. Here, I'll put on a bigger bait. Kind of simulate what a fish would look like. You know, if you were looking for panfish, here's like a seven inch Bondi bait, which would be like the size of a panfish you'd be looking for. And we'll go way over here. And then right there's that Bondi bait in the column. And watch, I'm gonna drop it down and it goes down to the bottom. Lift it up, and there it comes up off of the bottom. That Bondi bait is being jigged 45 feet away. So you can imagine if there was a school of panfish somewhere out there, we'd be able to see it no problem. So this is what we've been looking at here, straight across. 
And of course, the deepest spot of the pond is going to be in the middle. So as I pan it to the side here, you're going to see that we're going to go down to probably like 19, 20 feet. Okay. So we've got something crazy going on here. And then you can see on the vertical scale that it is about 19 feet in the middle. This plume is actually the aerator in that open spot there, pumping oxygen into the water. So that's what that is. And the uh, disturbances around it, I would guess are bait fish. Like any electronics, there's always some interpretation to it. I'm always a little leery when someone can explain absolutely everything they see on the screen. If they're like, oh yeah, that's definitely a fish and that's this and that's that. There's so much that you have to interpret and guess at, even when you are very familiar with your electronics. So I'm gonna keep panning it into the distance there and you'll see that it'll flatten out because I'm looking at the length of the pond now. And then uh, if, I, if I open up this scale a bit, you'll see in the very distance here, this is coming up to the weed line at the far end of the pond. Uh, it's getting to be a weak signal because it's over 100 feet away, but it's hitting the weed line way over there. And it's showing that the deepest is only 16 feet now because my angle is missing the middle of the pond. So again, if I were to back it up to the middle of the pond, you'll see that I can now hit that 18, 19 feet. So it's very effective if you're looking for uh, which way of you it's getting deeper, or if you're looking for where the top of a structure that you're fishing is. Like if there's a little rock pile somewhere around here, you can easily find it by swiveling all around you. I'm gonna keep on swinging, and now I'm pointed kind of closer into shore. You can see the weed line is much closer to me, and here I'm pointed straight into the shore. I can get a closer look at that here. So now I'm only 20 feet away to hit the weed line, basically straight into shore. So I'm just gonna keep turning it. And eventually that weed line will get further away as I start to pan over this way. And then I'm going to show you something by these ice shelters. There's actually sunken brush piles underneath them. So right about there, you can see there's a noticeable bump right here, and this is off of the weed line. The weed line starts right there, and right there's a noticeable bump. Um, these are probably the old holes drilled inside those tents back there, and that is a sunken brush pile that is right underneath that tent. Now I'm gonna show you the live view down, and this is what you're gonna use most of the time when you're fishing. So you gotta pull this up and adjust that so that it is pointed straight down. Okay, so, I've got two holes punched here, and they're each about four feet away from my transducer. And the first thing you're gonna notice is that the bottom is angled. And the reason that the bottom is angled is because it's actually showing me the taper of the shoreline here. It is 14 feet at eight feet away in this direction, and at eight feet away in the other direction, it is eight feet. I'm gonna drop a lure down on this inside hole. There it is, okay. So that bait is showing up five feet away. So I'm gonna drop that down and right there, I've hit the bottom. Now watch when this bait comes up off the bottom, instantly. See how that bait instantly? If there's a dead zone, it's only an inch or two. And the reason is we have a 19 degree beam widthways and a 100 degree lengthways. And what that means is that Yes, you could still hit a bit of a dead zone, but it breaks it up this way. So you're seeing exactly what the depth is here, 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 as opposed to inside that standard cone. If it hits this boulder, it's reading that as the bottom and this is all dead zone beside it. So within the area that we're fishing, you have a way smaller dead zone. And that's shown on the screen here because it shows the change in bottom depth. This Bondi bait, when I drop it down one hole over, it's gonna show up off to the other side. Here you can see it. So if you were fishing with standard ice fishing electronics and a 19 degree beam, you would have a four foot footprint that you can see on the bottom in 12 feet of water. So if you wanted to have them both on your screen, your holes would have to be about this far apart. And even then you'd be jigging on the outside of your cone, which isn't ideal. The other thing that you've probably experienced yourself if you've ever done this is that your baits overlap with each other. So if a fish comes in, you can't tell which lure a fish is looking at. Whereas on the live view down, we can see fish movements and interactions with each bait 
when a school of fish comes on the screen, you can count each individual fish in that school as they converge on your lure, as opposed to just everything looking like it's vertically. A fish looking like it's coming up to look at your lure, a fish looking like it's coming down to look at your lure. In reality, there's way more side to side movements. I'm still unpacking all the different applications and benefits this has to just like shorten the search, drill less holes, track the fish down. And obviously you don't have to have this technology. It's not gonna make you a way better angler overnight or something, but it is cool to see the future of fishing technology unfolding. And eventually those price points will come down to all users as this technology becomes more and more familiar. And this is what gets me excited because I have seen it all, played with it all, and there's been murmurs and buzz about panoptics for years now. But this winter is the first year it's available on ice and look forward to getting some cool videos done for you guys showing it off.